Depending on what definition you use, the size of global impact investing market is evaluated to be between $500 billion and $3 trillion. Just to give you an idea, it's somewhere between the size of annual GDP of the United Arab Emirates and the United Kingdom. This is an enormous force accelerating in its velocity. We all impact investors here, and we like patting ourselves on the back and give us each other cheerful approval. We can proudly cite all the statistics to show the impact of our work and like competing on whose impact measurement framework is better, stronger, and broader. That's all great. But what about another side of the coin? Today, I want to give us space and time to talk about unintended consequences of impact investing. According to McKinsey report, from May 2020 to October 2022, Fortune 1000 companies announced $340 billion in new commitments to fight racial injustice. This is all great news, isn't it? Yes except that the majority of those commitments were allocated as loan and deposits and went to a limited number of community finance organizations around America. No organization can have a large enough pipeline to absorb all this new capital, so the dollars are left undeployed, risking the financial stability of those organizations. What could be an alternative solution? I would advocate for a needs-based matching approach. Around the country, there is more than 650 minority depositor institutions. If each of those institutions received a portion of that large commitment, the dollars could be getting deployed into communities faster, more communities are being impacted, and the financial stability of the recipients would be intact. MasterCard is one of the organizations that went about this in a very intentional and strategic way. They use needs-based match approach to connect to deposit institutions that we need of deposits to support lending, lending activities in underserved communities. As a result, $20 million were deployed around the country. In, in the last couple of years, CFOs and treasurers put on their agenda to align cash management policies with corporate DNI and ESG agendas. Netflix is one of those organizations. They announced that they're going to put 2% of its cash and allocate it towards minority deposit institutions and institutions that serve BIPOC community around the country. But here's the twist. Short term, within the treasury definition, sorry, Cash within the treasury definition means short term. And short term is not always impactful within the scope of work of mission-driven banks and credit unions. As president and CEO of Aptus Bank, a minority deposit institution in South Carolina mentioned, what happens in three years if everyone calls their money back, and meanwhile, I've made a bunch of 10-year loans to black-owned businesses on Main Street. What a bank like ours need is patient investors. So what would you do? Well, you meet both parties in the middle and get creative. You can add side letters to money market deposits. You can incorporate liquidity windows in a long-term loan agreement. You can add loan loss reserves and guarantee in a promissory note. And the list goes on. The idea is to create something that can fit within the investment policy or cash management policy of an impact investor and actually provide helpful capital to mission-driven deposit institutions and community finance institutions on the ground. In the last couple of years, corporations made large financial commitments to fund construction or preservation of affordable housing in the communities where they have their presence, realizing that they actually might be contributing to the gentrification problem. In spite of great efforts and intentions, some of the early actions were actually met, actually met a lot of criticism because they were very far removed from actual reality that was happening in the community 
and ended up benefiting high-income groups. Uh, probably the most well-regarded uh, corporate housing effort was initiated by Amazon in Washington region. Amazon leaders chose to hire local staff that knew the circumstances of the communities quite well and made deals directly to local developers. The Washington state is known to have quite well-connected housing community with founders, administrators, developers, and politicians. And so Amazon money was, uh, was leveraged by local developers to attract other resources and investors. Well, good news is that impact investors don't have to recreate this essential combination of local network and expertise and knowledge and trust in the communities. It's actually achievable with just one partnership with one of the organizations. For example, Inclusive, it's a membership organization for 400 low-income designated credit union that represents the voices of 18 million members around the country. As we navigate the world of impact investing, I envision the future where we break free from the patterns of the past. It might be uncomfortable to realize that doing the same things and expecting different results is actually a sign of insanity. It takes courage to challenge the status quo. It might be uncomfortable and conventional and feels lonely, and yet I'm inviting you to join me in this new journey, to take this new path. It's not a well-paid path. It has a lot of unexpected turns and twists and obstacles along the way, but I encourage you to stick to it, to commit to it, and it will lead us to a new future where every investment decision is going to be taken with care and consideration where we can proactively address unintended consequences of our actions, and where we can fund intentionally the diverse range of initiatives that uplift our communities and safeguard our planet. Join me on this journey. We can all do it together. Thank you.